In today's video, we're gonna take a look at some of my homemade shop tools. G'day, welcome back to my home machine shop. My name's Aaron. So this video will be a continuation of other videos that other YouTube machinists have put up on YouTube. And it's our way of having a crack at the algorithm, the Google algorithm. So this video will have the hashtag homemade shop tools, and hopefully we can uh, manipulate that algorithm a little bit for our benefit for, for our other home shop machinists and uh, hopefully generate some views, uh, some very needed views. Some of these tools I'll be covering today uh, will be an axle puller that I made when I was 16 years of age as a first year apprentice back in 1984, a long, long time ago, uh, to my little Morse tapered two button die threading attachment for the lathe, which I made back in probably about 2004, 2005. Uh, to some of the tools that I've made here on this channel while you guys have been following me, such as my engineer square, my jig, my little mini G clamp, my drill, drill stand. But I'll also cover some of these other shop tools that, uh, you know, that you had to make there and then, okay? When you're pulling apart a, a car and you don't have the tool to, to do what you need to do, and such as this one here, this is to push out the hub, a front wheel bearing hub on a front wheel drive car, which I made, which fits on a Mazda or a Ford Laser to a piston tool to screw the piston back into the caliper when you're changing out brake pads because you didn't have the right tool on the day. So stuff you gotta knock up on the quick to get the job out. Uh, to this funny looking thing here, which is my helicopter rotor blade balancer that I built uh, many years ago, probably about 2006, 2007. And it's got needle rollers up on the top end here. Uh, very accurate, okay, it's got a bubble level in it. And we'll take a look at these up close and a little bit more personal in a minute. Right, here's my axle puller. Now I built this many, many, many years ago, would you believe? So don't be too critical. So I was actually 16 years of age when I built this. And this was actually a first year apprenticeship project uh, when I went to TAFE. And uh, it was all done, literally all done with a hacksaw and a file. And of course you used a drill bit, drill bit to drill the holes. Um, the bridge here, is made from angle line, two pieces and butt welded up the middle of it with a V-butt. Um, we've got a reinforcement plug here. You can see some of my welds, they're a little bit ugly. Uh, this was all, these were days before MIG welding. So it was all arc welded, electric arc welding process. Um, we had the slide hammer and I think I may have been out with my measurements. I, I can only remember doing this a little bit, you know, believe it or not. and. Uh, I think I may have been out with my measurements here. I'm pretty sure this should have been the same length. I don't have the plans for it. If you'd like the plans, I've actually uh, remodeled this and remodeled it in CAD and I'll attach the PDF plans uh, in this video link if you're interested and you can have a crack yourself. Now I believe these slotted holes here, uh, when we did it, I think we fold them out or, or oxy cut them, I cannot remember. Now we may have oxy cut these out back in the day then hand filed it down but there was no milling machine at all. So it was all uh, hand tools. I th we did use a lathe, okay, to make the round parts and I'll unscrew that and I'll show you. Now, I think these, originally it would have been all designed around the Imperial system and of course they would have changed it to make it metric uh, when we were first year apprentices. This was way back in 1984. Okay, now to make this you'll need 10 mil plate so back in the day, that probably would have been 3.8. This was 160 diameter, so you'd have to go a little bit bigger square to work that out. Um, some angle line, that plug, that reinforcement plug. You've got your the sliding rod, which is tapped both ends. It has this little stop on the end that screws on as well. And of course, you've got your mass for sliding, okay, that action there for pulling and banging, you can see here. All right. When I was actually on the tools as a motor mechanic, you'd always have to make jobs to, to fit special um, purposes and applications. Now this was for a Mazda 323, which was sold in Australia by the Ford company. It was rebadged uh, Ford Laser. And this was a tool that I made to press out the wheel bearings in the front end. Being front wheel drive, you'd pull it all apart, you'd bolt this onto the stub axle 
and screw up the bolt and that would press out, press out the, um, the wheel bearing shaft, which was a real prick to get off. And, you know, when you don't have tools in a local garage, you know, I, I used to work in a country garage and uh, you'd make your own to fit. Okay, and back in the day, that would have been once again all, you know, you know, measured and marked out by hand and, you know, arc welded, not MIG welded, and, but it did the job. So there you go, there's a little uh, hub puller that I made. Now, when you're replacing rear brake, brake shoes in a car, you can buy these purposely designed uh, piston tools. Now, when you service rear brakes uh, in cars, and they usually um, apply, uh, if, if pull the handbrake on and it would screw the piston out on the rear caliper to apply the handbrake, you could buy these commercially made tools. But nine times out of 10, I didn't have these back in the day. So you'd have to make your own. So you'd always get a, an old brake pad, cut it down, okay, which would give me that lug. You know, we didn't have a milling machine back in the shop. We're talking back in the 80s and the early 90s. You know, I'd weld a nut on and you'd make some sort of tool that would represent something like that. Now, today in my shop, I could quite easily knock, you know, these up without a problem. Okay, my next tool that I'd like to share with you today is my threading tool okay now this i made this way back in about 2004 i think 2005 it's a while ago and it was to suit a hercus lathe uh, with a morse taper too on the end here and uh, you can see the morse taper would slide into the tailstock that would support it this would slide over you'd put your button die in the front of this okay tighten it up and then thread it. And I've used this a few times on my channel in some of my videos. Now, it looks pretty good. However, <laughs> the big fella made a mistake and I'm gonna own up and confess here. If you check this, when I use the dividing head, I think I was about a couple of degrees out or you know, five to 10 degrees out and I stuffed up one of the handles and I was pissed off when I did it. Um, so this was actually a university project that we had to make and uh, I was heading for top marks until I did that. So I was really down on myself. But anyway, shit happens, unfortunately. That's what happens when you're rushing to a timeline. But yeah, look, really, really cool little job. Many people, there's many different um, iterations of these online. Um, I really like this one. It works well for me. And one day I might even model it and put the plans online for you guys to have a crack at making one yourself as well. All right. You may not know what this is. Okay, so. If, uh, if any of you guys have watched any of my other YouTube videos on my other channel, you'll notice that I also fly RC aircraft, right? Now, this is a blade balancing apparatus that I built. Now, it wouldn't have a spanner in here. You'd put the helicopter rotor blade, the main rotor blade in here, okay? And you would balance it out. So if I take this spanner out to give you an idea, and it's, you know, it's got a bit of weight to it, this old spanner. And as you can see, if you put it in here, so this blade balancer. Now this is another shop made tool. And you can see that I made a, just a bit of um, hollow, square hollow steel section, uh, welded a flat plate on it, you know, drilled, drilled some holes, screwed it into a timber base. Up here, I'm running needle roller bearings through the top piece here. This top section here is uh, made out of aluminium. It's supposed to reflect like a, a blade grip, okay? and was threaded and tapped and put in a four jaw ch chuck and machine down here. Use the milling machine here to round off the nose. And by adjusting this screw forward and back, you can get very accurate balance. So you can, if you can imagine you've got a set of blades, could be two or three, okay? You, all these blades have to weigh the same weight. Otherwise it induces an imbalance in the rotor head and the machine can shake itself apart. And by adjusting this screw here on this threaded rod here, okay, so if I back this out, you can see that now the bubble goes off center. Okay, I screw that back in again. Just gotta wait for it to, very, very sensitive. And just to give you an idea how sensitive it is, I'm gonna put a little bit of sticky tape on the end. Okay, you can see that bubble is right in the middle there at the moment. I'll zoom in so you guys can see that. It's a little bit out of focus because I've got manual focus set up at the moment. 
but you can see the bubbles right in the center. Okay, let's put on a little bit of tape. And that's what you'd usually do. You'd find the center of gravity on the blade. And if we've got a little bit of tape here, and if I put that on the, pretend that's the blade, and you can see all, automatically the bubble has shifted off center. Um, and it worked quite well for numerous years until I bought a better one. All right. No doubt if you've been watching my channel, you've seen some of my other builds that I've done, such as the Engineer Square, the little miniature G-clamp. We've got the metric and imperial drill set that I made. Okay, so there's some other little projects that I've made, but I'd like to show you one other thing. And this is a mystery tool. And if anybody can tell me what this is, you're doing well, because not many people can. All right, so this is not a shop built tool. This is a, this is a bought tool. And this was owned by my father for many, many years. And I wonder if anybody on here knows what it's for. Okay. Have a look. And it would slide together. I'll put it together to show you. And this is probably a giveaway now. All right, if you know what this actually does, um, write something in the comments. Um, I'll pick the winner and uh, I don't know, I'm happy to send the winner a sticker, an our engineering sticker, channel sticker in the mail. Well, there we have it. Um, I really hope you got something out of this. So I hope you enjoyed the little tour of tools that I've made uh, along my journey. Um, like I said, if you know the name of that mystery tool that I showed in video earlier, please put it down in the comments below and you know, wh whoever wins it, I'll draw a name out of a hat and I'll send you over some channel stickers wherever, anywhere in the world. Um, once again, I just wanna thank you, the viewers and my subscribers. Thank you for uh, sticking with me and supporting me and um, you know, clicking that like button, engaging in the comments. You know, I really enjoy it, thank you. And uh, I'm having a lot of fun with this channel and I hope it continues. So in closing, I just want to say that uh, this channel is not monetized at all and I don't have Patreon and I don't ask for anything. I purely do it out of my hobby and my enjoyment to give back to other machinists, okay? And other, you know, other normal people that just want to have a crack in their workshop at home. So remember, I've got the plans for this axle puller down in the description area. You can download the 3D model or the PDF um, plans and have a crack yourself, guys, all right? Cheers. Really appreciate it. Have fun. Have a lovely day. Stay safe and look after one another. See you on the next Aaron Engineering video. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.